Is there a mouthpiece that can class up your alto sound for less than $100? I believe there is. The Autolink Tone Edge. We're gonna talk specs to a full playing test and see if this might be the best alto saxophone mouthpiece for under $100. Now I get a lot of emails asking what's a great mouthpiece I can buy and my budget is only $100. And bonus points if I can find it on Amazon, preferably Amazon Prime. Well, I went on Amazon and I was surprised by what I found. A giant five pound gummy bear for less than 30 bucks. I also found this mouthpiece. So let's dig in and see if it's any good. Now, Autolink is a name that's been around for about 100 years. There's been a lot of variations in the mouthpieces they make and where they've been made. And the vintage pieces are differentiated by rings and barrels and slant signatures, straight signatures. They're highly sought after, some of the models, and they go for a hefty premium. And some of the most iconic tenor players have played on Autolinks. Ben Webster, Coleman Hawkins, Dexter Gordon, Hank Mobley, John Coltrane, and of course, Stan Getz. Autolink has never been terribly popular with alto players, though. My first alto mouthpiece was actually an Autolink metal version back in the 1990s, and it was terrible. It was dark and stuffy, yet bright somehow at the same time. I put it away and I haven't thought about it since. But 30 years later, this hard rubber Autolink is pretty different. Now, the modern Autolink is made by the J.J. Babbitt Company, the same company that makes the modern Meyer mouthpieces. Now, the naysayers will say they're no good. The modern ones don't have the right rubber. The mold's all wrong. You can't get a good quality. You have to go vintage. That's not been my experience. Over the years, I've ordered maybe half a dozen Meyers. They all played pretty darn well. A couple of them played very well. I'm not saying they're as good as the vintage ones, but my students have been able to pick up very affordable pieces that play very well without doing the eBay hunt for five or $600 vintage mouthpieces. Now, the one I've been testing this week is the seven facing at 0.085 thousandths of an inch. We use the American system here at the Saxophone Academy. Now that's a bit wider than the Meyer, which is at 0.081. It has very little baffle. I find just enough to give it a bit of edge, but it really allows for a warmth and a body to the sound that you don't get a lot in mouthpieces this cheap. The chamber is kind of round, kind of oval. Roval? It's a more open chamber than, say, a Selmer Soloist, but it's not what I would consider a large chamber. The tip and side rails are kind of all medium thickness, which give it just enough edge, not too dark. And they're pretty symmetrical in the one I received. And the table seemed nice and flat. It seemed fairly well manufactured. It sealed the reed, no problem. And in general, the one I got was very reed friendly. As for aesthetics, I always liked the way the Autolinks looked, kind of understated. I like the little banding around the edges, the little links, the little stamp on the side and the USA on the shank. So far so good, but how does it sound? So I spent a week practicing on this guy, and let's see what $97 sounds like. Articulation felt nice and crisp and had plenty of power, but it never got away from me like some of the modern mouthpieces can with large baffles. It was kind of more subtle, a gentleman's mouthpiece. Intonation was pretty good, and in the longer lines, it had a singing quality I really liked. <laughs>
Now, with the lack of real baffle and warmer sound, how is it venturing above F3? How is it in the altissimo range? That's fine. It may not pop out as easily as a jumbo Java, but it speaks easily enough, and you get to keep the paint on your walls. Now, for me, one of the big tests of mouthpiece quality is how does it react to the low end, specifically low B-flat. Can you start with a big, full, open sound? Even softer articulation wasn't a problem. Overall, for $97, I'm impressed. Now, for less than $100, you do get a cap and ligature with this mouthpiece, but the cap and ligature kind of meet the minimum legal definition of what can be considered a cap and ligature. The cap doesn't fit terribly well. It pops off if you look at it funny. And the ligature may be the worst ligature I have ever seen. Now, don't get me wrong. I like a good stock ligature. Yamaha and Selmer make some stock ligatures I really like. This one, the screws squeak. It doesn't fit well. It's ugly, and it kind of digs into my reed at a funny angle. I know what you're wondering. Why not just cough up 20 more bucks and get the Meyer? Or then you can even venture into the Van Doren line of mouthpieces. Well, there seems to be a psychological barrier to the $100 mark. And getting someone to cough up 20 bucks more isn't always easy. I teach a career development course down at the local university, and we have a $20 textbook. And I'd like to give you a dramatic reason of the reasons students won't cough up 20 bucks. Rent is due. My coffee maker broke. My dog ate my wallet. I want to buy a dog. The patriarchal system has implemented a capitalistic system which keeps the... This one goes on for a while. That's just inappropriate. Let's not dive into other people's budgets and just agree it's a pretty good mouthpiece for less than $100. So now let's address the elephant in the room. How does this Autolink compare to the modern Meyer? It's not really a fair comparison. They do two different things. It's like comparing a Rolls Royce to a Ferrari or Adam West to Christian Bale. They're both great, but they are designed to do different things. But in general, the Meyer is a bit more focused. It's a bit louder, has a bit more cut to the edge, and has a more transparent core to the sound. The Autolink is a little bit warmer, a little bit softer, but still plenty of volume. So at $97, I really feel it's a very good bargain. Now, is it so good I'd be willing to trade in my Tonalin or my hand-faced Filtone mouthpiece? Nope. But if it broke or I lost one or I needed a backup, I wouldn't bet an eye. It's comfortable, I like the sound, and it's a pleasure to play. If you found this helpful, we would certainly appreciate a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments what's your favorite budget Alto mouthpiece. And until next week, go practice. <laughs>